Today I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful oak picture frame. Here in the video it starts off a little strange as I have already made the 45 degree cuts on my miter saw. However the miter saw was not dialed in so I took it to the table saw to get that perfect 45 degrees on my miter sled. Also not shown here are the rabbits that I cut in the back side of the frame for the glass to sit in. The router table is my go-to for rabbits but feel free to use whatever method you're most comfortable with. I highly recommend cutting the rabbit before cutting the frame to size just in case something gets messed up. Frame glue ups are one of my favorites. Line everything up, connect the corners with tape, slap on the glue, and roll the frame like a wheel. Then tape the last section together. If you plan on doing this a couple of times, then I recommend a strap clamp like this Betsy model. The link is in the description. Next step is a spline jig. If you haven't seen this video already, please check it out after this. I break down how easily it is to make this out of scrap wood. After cutting the notch for the spline, it's time to slice slivers of material for the spline itself. Here I chose some cherry, just because I had it on hand. In the future, I plan on making some sort of stop block for this process, as sanding afterwards is such a pain. And you can ruin the spline if it's too thin, which is such a waste of time. You want these nice and snug with zero gaps. Once dry, I prefer to use the bandsaw, but a nice fine tooth Japanese pool saw works well to trim up the splines. Next up is everybody's favorite activity, sanding. 220 grit would do the job, but I think it's worth another pass at 320, which will bring a super smooth finish. Adding some more flair to the frame is just as easy as rounding over the face corners. If you're bold, you could take the frame back to the router table, or if you're good at pre-planning, do it when you cut the rabbit for the glass. Otherwise, this is where hand tools shine. I was giving this chamfer plane to review a while back, and I like it, except they don't sell replacement blades, and the one I have only has one roundover option. I'll link to one that has multiple blades to swap to and from. As usual, I'm using Walrus Oil's furniture finish. As long as the finish keeps looking good this good, I'll keep sticking with them. Cutting the glass is pretty easy and straightforward using a straight edge and a glass cutter. I have since picked up some cut resistant gloves as it's very easy to slice a finger when dealing with glass. I sanded the edges off with 220 grit before putting it back in the frame. I really love the look of this frame and I hope you get the chance to make something similar in the future as it makes a perfect gift.